Chop that in with just a little bit of lemon. Mix it together, and then that is the topping for your salmon, and even put it on your chicken. Ooh. Like a relish. Like a relish. Yes, thank Sounds you, Jackie. Fantastic. Yes, you know. And then what happens if people are uh, cannot have yogurt? They're saying unsweet Greek yogurt. Uh huh. What could they do for that? For un- can you repeat that one more time? Yeah, if somebody is allergic to milk products. And uh, they say Greek yogurt, but the yogurt is pretty much whatever milk that you buy. It's, you know, the same thing. So what could one do for a substitute for the yogurt? Um, They do make a lot. They're coming out with a lot of different coconut milk yogurt um, and also goat yogurt. And goat has trace amounts of casein, little to none. Um, so I always tell my clients who are, have an allergy to dairy to do coconut yogurt or goat yogurt. I got to try that. Yeah, and I sweeten it. I tell people, you know, don't buy your yogurt pre-sweetened. Sweeten them yourself with berries, honey, 100% pure maple syrup mm-hmm. um, would, you know, be a much better a much better sugar to sweeten it up. Yeah, and then also they have the thing you were talking about, broccoli. Uh, that's number four. Number five is a wild salmon. And then number ten, of course, is the leafly, leaf, blah, 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 I can't talk, leafly greens. You know, all the different uh, salads and that you can do with spinach and all, every kind of green that you can think of. That works really nice. Number nine was butternut squash. Number eight Ooh, that's is... that's my favorite. Oh, I love butternut squash. Do, do you make soup out of yours? I do. I have. Oh, it is so good. So good. Yeah, and that soups are great because they you can store them. They double the recipes, and that's great for that one night that you don't have time to cook, and you pull it out of the freezer, and you have a really yummy meal. Uh huh. And it's good for lunch, and it's easy. Oh, to, totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's easy to transport from your home to work. Yes, it is. Yeah, and Jackie, what's out on that list? The crisp breads are at the number six in terms of better for health. Uh, rye crisp. What do you think about those, Anna, those kind of crisp crackers? Crisp cra- crackers. I don't know if I've heard of crisp well, crackers. Well, like, the, tri- like the, uh, the rye crisps that have all the fiber. Like the- yeah, I'm not familiar with those. Oh. Where do you find them? Oh, all the grocery stores. They're very oh. good because they're they're super dry. They're Norwegian. They do, they have a lot of fiber. You can put some cream cheese on it or cheese. Ooh, yeah, that sounds olives, good. Sounds Greek good to olives, me. That things like that. Nice. Yeah, that sounds nice. Or some of your relish that you're going to bring over to my house. Yes, yes, we'll <laughs> yeah. do that when and when we have our women's group. Okay, and it's a private group. I cannot say the name on it because I'm going to be beeped. Uh, but we'll tell you later on what 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 it is. You right? bring the relish, and I'll bring the crisp. <laughs> right. And then what about the garbanzo ca- beans? Garbanzo. <laughs> garbanzo beans. Thank you. Garbanzo. Yeah, absolutely. I make that's another good um, for children who can't have nuts and they their parents want to pack them with celery and instead of peanut butter or carrots. Instead of peanut butter, you can make a homemade hummus out of garbanzo beans. Oh, I love hummus. Um, that's really, really, really tasty. Um, so so uh, hummus can and guacamole can take the place of, you know, nut butters those that have an allergy. Mm-hmm. You know, they really can. There are so many flavors that you can put into hummus. The cumin, uh, like you say, the olive oil, so many mm-hmm. good things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yum. Mia, are you getting hungry? Actually, I am. Everything <laughs> sounds so good. And yeah, now, Mia, why don't you jump in at this moment because we got both of the ladies in-house, well, Half in house, half on phone right now. <laughs> why don't you talk about the twins and their allergies, what you know, oh. what they're going through, and these ladies could probably help you. Okay, this is the thing. My children, my daughter Bianca is the oldest, was allergic to dairy. So she had to go on soy, right? And um, when I had my twins, theirs were far more severe. They're allergic to soy and dairy, and it had to go on a special formula by me, Johnson, called Neutromagen, at the time was $23 a can, but it was a medical condition where they have severe allergies, they can't have any dairy products, no milk, they've never had ice cream and cake in their entire lives, they're 21 years old now, some of the foods, the 
are just barely introduced to each other. Restricted diet has been a nightmare for them. But, you know, you learn to adjust. And it was very difficult. Even to this day, many foods they can't eat. And like if they eat pizza or something, it has to be heated very high or they can't eat it or it can cause a broken swallow. So they have to take like um, antihistamine in order to function. So it, that one is really challenging. So you can imagine their diet is very, very restricted. And that's been like a nightmare. And then I hear things about people saying that there's gluten-free and I've heard gluten caused a lot of um, issues and medical issues and a lot of people, which is the popular thing for having gluten-free. So we're slowly introducing them to different foods that they have available that maybe they can try and hopefully not have an allergic reaction to. No. Mia, I got to bump in. We're having trouble. We're towards the end. We could barely hear you. I'm sorry. How about now? How, how, let's try it again. Okay. Is, is that better? It's At the very end, it, I was saying that they're introduced to some foods they can tolerate, but like my son Christian, he can't eat chicken at all. And there, it, it's just been a nightmare for him. I feel really bad because you know, he can't if enjoy I could, food like other people can. If I could jump in. You know, I've worked with cases like this for decades in my in my practice, and don't give up. There are many techniques that. What happens is your your kids have your adult children have to heal their bodies, and then they'll be able to accept the foods. And I know Anna can jump in on this of where to start. But when you say, when you have severe allergies, it means your ecosystem is wrong. You mm-hmm. don't have the mm-hmm. right bacteria in your gut. You That's don't right. have the right amount of stomach acid in your stomach. And so foods are going through undigested. You're not having enough pancreatic enzymes. And your whole system can be off from birth. Maybe you did, uh, not to put, there's no blame anywhere, but maybe when you were pregnant or before pregnancy, you had done some antibiotics that killed your culture and then the kids didn't get a good ecosystem or uh, toxins in the home, and I'm going to let Anna jump in here now, but I don't want you to give up hope because these are the kind of challenges that people in my kind of field love to work with. So go ahead, right, Anna. Absolutely. Yeah, and, you know, it's it's not just nutrition. I, Jackie also has a huge role in using NAT um, for allergies to retrain the nervous system to accept these nutrients yeah, that someone's right. allergic to. but. I, I also believe that when their body, when their nervous system is ready and okay with those nutrients, that we've got to get to the root cause, and that's healing and feeling the digestive system. These undigested proteins are getting into the bloodstream because our body, uh, like Jackie said, the ecosystem's off. The body's not breaking down these proteins. They're leaching into our bloodstream, um, crafting our blood-brain barrier and getting to our brain. But, but when it's in the bloodstream, that's when your body starts to attack um, that protein, your body doesn't recognize that protein, and so what happens is you be, you, you're allergic to it. You, be, you develop an allergy to it. Um, so your immune system is just in this sympathetic, excitatory state, um, and over time, you know, more food allergies start to pop up. So it's really fixing the gut, fixing the leaky gut, and, and focusing in on the immune system, and um, also emotional health, too, plays right. a huge role in, in any kind of autoimmunity, any kind of allergy. So I think that it's, you know, it's not just nutrition. I think that there's a whole lot that goes along with it, you know. But the big focus is the gut and the immune system and, and the person's emotional response, too. Now, I'd like to break in for a minute. Uh, earlier today, Jesse and I were on the phone, and, and we were talking about all all of this. We, we get in some heavy discussions on the phone. And one of the things that we both wanted to find out now – Talking about f- people and and the food allergies and this and that. Now, the number one killer in this country is obesity. That's number one, straight across the board. I don't care what they're saying. Which could be prevented. Which can be, uh, c- yes. Depending, because a lot of parents and stuff let their kids eat whatever they want and stuff and have no diet. Even at a young age, I mean, you should be watching what you're eating, you know? Cause yeah, you're and you know, our, our, our doctors are labeling obesity as, as a disease. Exactly. And I beg to differ. It's a, it's a symptom. It's a symptom of something on the inside that's turned off is what obesity is. You know, it's, exactly. it, it shouldn't be labeled a disease, um, but unfortunately, it is on the rise. We have so much access to 
foods that should never be put into our bodies. Government and whole is nother, poisoning us. <laughs> right, and there's a whole other, you know, when it's a hormonal issue, it could be a thyroid issue, an adrenal issue, it could be a liver issue. The, to- the more toxins one has, the more fat that's going to accumulate around those toxins to protect your body from turning into something like cancer. Exactly. So the more toxins, the more fat. Um, yep. So it is more than just food and exercise, you know, which is, is not what we hear oftentimes. But. No. Uh-huh. Well, the thing is, when we got onto this subject, now Jesse and I are on the other end of the scale. Unfortunately, we were born this way, right? Can't born blame mom way. and dad or whatever, right? But the thing is, now we have that celiac where there are certain foods that you cannot eat no matter what. You're done. And a lot of times... Uh, Jesse and I, we sit down and we eat like a bunch of cows. Mm, I mean, constantly eating, 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 eating. But we cannot get the weight back on. Now, could it be possible because of the celiac? Or could there be a blockage somewhere that none of the doctors picked up yet? Yeah, because I have a fast metabolism. I, like, work out and I eat properly and stuff, but I just don't do much cardio just because I lose weight so fast, you know. And I know, like, my schedule and stuff kind of is a reason as well. But um, I pretty much, yeah, I eat okay and I work out. but And I try to gain weight, but I, I somewhat, I can't, you know. Mm-hmm. I know yeah, that's, I, like, I, like, you know, I know it sounds kind of weird, like, who wants to gain weight, but, I mean. It doesn't sound weird. Yeah. I, I wish I had that issue. I'd be worried. Yeah. I can't walk. No, no. Well, See, I'll but, tell you what. But what some people don't understand is like us skinny people that really would love to like gain. I mean, I'm not saying all this weight, but I'm saying like, you know, as me as a man, like I think I'm too skinny. You know, I need to be I need to be a little bit more thicker. For a woman, it's right, different. It's right, it's, it's right. the thing to be skinny. Like it's cool. I mean, you don't. It's not. You know, I no, like. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So basically what I'm saying, me being a man. Men enjoy curves. That's just my input there. I just, yeah, I just prefer, you know, to have some meat on me, and I just, I, I don't. Like, I don't know. I just, it's, it's tough to gain weight. What a, look at me, I just laughing at me, huh? <laughs> you know what? I just had a brilliant idea. Okay, Hannah and yes. uh, Mia, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. yeah okay, hear here's the idea. Now, Hannah, you and Jackie, mundle this over among yourselves. We won't get any farther on, on the program here, right? But wouldn't it be something that we do like a once a month segment on all of this? And then, you know, Jesse and I can talk to you two ladies off the air, Mia, because of her children. And let's see what we can come up with and and do this thing. You know, the word has to get out. I've been in alternative health care for 34 years, Mm -hmm. and yet it's still not really well known how much the body can heal Mm -hmm. when i have had people with celiac and i'm not making any medical claims because their body did their own healing but then this healing goes away when you Uh heal the other things you know in my own case well yes but to go back to your offer of once a month discussion on this anything to help people know just because you've got a diagnosis it doesn't mean it's forever Right. You know, and that because I, I got to tell you how I got into this after college was I had 10 years of severe migraine headaches, constant fevers, and everybody said I was normal. All my blood tests. Everything was, came back normal. Everything and, and normal. You're gone, what are you kidding me? So what's wrong? And I'm in yeah. bed 10 days a month with migraines, and I go and I did this kind of energy technique like I do now. And with uh-huh. the, with the, working with my own energy in my body, I got rid of all my reactions. I got tested for 150 foods. Only three was I not allergic to. Three out of 150. Whoa. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. Holy. Holy. Everything gave me migraines. And now uh-huh. I can eat whatever I want and nothing gives me. I haven't had a migraine in 15 years. Oh, wow. Wow. Really inter- can I say something yes. real quick? Yes. Yeah. This is what's interesting. My you have five kids. seconds. Just kidding. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, One, two. Children. Oh, I'm not that off. You know what I mean. I'm not <laughs> 